everybody. Welcome back to the Sodak Motorcycle Blog. I am Clutch, and I'd like to thank you for coming back and checking out part two of our 3,000 Miles to Graceland special. So where I left you, I was just uh, enjoying a ice-cold Powerade in Trinidad, Colorado, starting to get a little sore, kind of giving everyone a little pep talk if you're doing this run on your own. So for part two here, we're going to carry on. So... Let's join back in the action just to the south of Trinidad, Colorado, heading into New Mexico. Alrighty. Once again on the road between Trinidad and Raton. Raton or Raton, I don't know how they say it. I'll probably butcher it, but whatever. Anyways. We're still flocking along. So I'm here to tell you there's some beautiful country between Pueblo and uh, Trinidad. Holy crud. And I apologize that there's none of it in this video. Yep, I rechecked my numbers. Yes, I'm 40 minutes ahead, but I want to keep it that way. So because I was on the iron butt run, I did not stop and switch the battery out because my battery died on me in Colorado Springs. So I apologize for that. You're gonna have to go experience it for yourself. But as a consolation prize, I've got this part of the road heading up to the to Raton Pass on the border of New Mexico and Colorado. So, hey, consolation prize anyway. And like I said, an excuse for you to come out here and experience that yourself. So the sit rep, it is 79 degrees. We are just, we're right around 700 miles from the trip. My odometer says 700. I said it probably about 10 miles late, so it's 710, and then we got to take off the fact that take up 35 miles for my error. So we're sitting at about 685 miles right now. So we're getting there. Not too bad, like I said, the days turned out pretty nice. What's amazing is uh, we were down to 41 at places this morning, and like I said, we're down, we're up to 80 degrees now. So. But we just about killed another state. About to head into New Mexico. We got one more stop in Santa Fe and then uh, the night stop in Gallup. So, and if we keep this pace up, if we keep the pace up, which we'll see, if we, even if we can keep this at uh, 40 minutes ahead, that would be awesome because then we'll get into uh, Gallup about 9 o'clock, which would be great because then that means I only got, oh, about 40 minutes after the sun goes down that I got to deal with, which would be good because I figure anytime you can avoid riding at night, you know, that's good just because at night it's harder to see and all that stuff, so... The advantage is, is um, I didn't plan it this way, but the nights are kind of corresponding with the full moon, so that's nice. But the plan is at the moment for tomorrow, we're going to, originally I wanted to do 6, and then I thought, well, I'll do 5.30. Now, hopefully at 5, I'm, I'm hoping maybe I can get out of Gallup by 5 tomorrow. That would be great, because that'll set me... I'll be a half hour ahead of what I've already plotted, so that would get me into Vegas about 12.30 Pacific time. Which, I gotta be there by 3 o'clock Pacific time, so I'd still have two and a half hours of a buffer. So, and hell, if, it's going, if it goes like it did today, we might be even earlier if I can add some stops along the way, so. Or add some time along the way, so. We'll see how it goes. Honestly, now that I'm on the clock, I might set my alarm for four o'clock and be like, well, once the alarm hits at four and however quickly I can get out of there, I can get out of there, whether that be 4.30 or 4.15 or five o'clock. So, but yeah, I'm definitely gonna try to leave by five now because I don't want to lose this little lead I got going. Like I said before, you do a run like this, if you get ahead, stay ahead. 
I think it helps me a lot that I used to drive a truck over the road. So that's kind of the, you know, how you, when you're driving over the road, that's kind of how you do it. You have, if you're a guy, if you're ahead of schedule, that's great because once you get behind, your your it sucks. You can never catch back up. What's amazing with being ahead by 40 minutes is the fact that I got sidetracked for 10 minutes on that little stupid detour in Colorado. So, pretty impressive when you think about it. And hopefully it stays that way. Oh, I hope I can get ahead of it. Well, it's going to suck. These trucks are going to slow everything up. Yep. Bad spot to have the right lane closed. Up we go. Yeah, we're gonna stay over here. Unless that vehicle gets closer, which I don't, yeah. If you're coming up on a bunch of trucks going up a big hill, just slow down. Or not slow down, but just go. Get around them. Don't wait on them. got a mess up here but they can't really build in a, a slow lane because well as you can see that's it there's nothing there's they can't get up that's also why that truck stop in Trinidad's a chain up site because or that is where the scale and chain up is because you definitely need chains to get up this hill if it's snowing because unlike your pickup trucks do not have four-wheel drive And once you get that road a little bit slick, you're kind of done with the truck. It's just the way it is. Alright, we're about to check another state off here. Yep, there it is. The border's right there. <laughs> Negative 460, so this is a New Mexico exit. And yep, as you can see, welcome to New Mexico. No, it is not Mexico. So, a co worker of mine, he was adamant that I was going to Mexico. Like, I had him, I had him. He, for whatever reason he thought oh yeah you're going to Mexico I'm like no I'm going to New Mexico there is a big difference <laughs> there's a huge difference between Mexico and New Mexico <laughs> as in they're in two different countries but like I said he's not uh, I don't know hey we made it to Las Vegas see Las Vegas The only problem is, is this isn't the right Las Vegas. This is Las Vegas, New Mexico. So we got a little bit to go. <laughs> but it's all good. Maybe we can call this a double Las Vegas. Nope, we're still quite a ways from Las Vegas. So, but we're good. Well, just leaving Santa Fe now. Things that'll happen to you on the road. So I'm down to uh, I think I'm only I'm only 45 minutes ahead now. I was hoping to get more. I would have got more, but uh, I'll slip there in Santa Fe, which is the only gas station near the road in Santa Fe, because apparently people on the highway aren't supposed to stop in Santa Fe. I don't. Whatever. I don't. So, get there, put fuel in, no receipt, clerk has receipt, four person deep line to get the receipt. Well then the person in front of me, prepays in front of me. So now we can't get the receipt. Well, so I'm like, well, I'll go buy a water then. So I go buy a damn water. Well then he prints the receipt off, it's like, and then of course I feel bad because I got the damn water in my hand now. I'm like, well, okay, fine. So. That was a 35-minute stop that didn't need to be 35 or 30 minutes. But just an example of some of the stupid crap that'll happen to you when you're out on the road. I can't complain too much. 
this is where having that buffer again comes in handy. This is why I didn't around or screw around at some of the other stops because, well, if I would have been running right on time with that one with like, you know, let's say an extra 15 minutes, I would have used it all up. So that's why when you're on, like I said, when you're on time, when you're when you're ahead of schedule, stay ahead of schedule. Don't don't slack, at least for a while. Now if I was just going a thousand miles, I probably would have uh, I probably would have been would have just went went ahead and just not worried about it, you know. I would have I would have dinked around a little bit more, but since I am going the 50 rest of the 1500 tomorrow, I want to make sure I get it done. Like I've said time and time again, quick stops are everything when you're running down the road. That's that's where you can make up your time. So Anyways, we're done with there now. Like I said, we're still 45 minutes ahead of schedule, which that's phenomenal considering that was a 30 minute stop. Even that would have been a 20 minute stop, hell, it, we would have been ahead by an hour. And without that little snap in Colorado, that's an hour and 10 minutes. That's 70 minutes basically right there. They're just from little stupid things adding up, you know, so. Or well, that's 25 extra minutes basically I lost from stupid stuff, so. But, you know, that's part of the deal when you're going down the road on one of these. You just kind of got to live with it, you know, because it happens. And I will hand it to the guy. I'm glad he printed off my receipt. Like, he didn't, I didn't even ask for that. Like, I was in line. He's like, hey, what, what pump you got? And, oh, it was six. Do you remember how many gallons? Well, kind of. I didn't remember the I didn't remember the dollar total, so I had to kind of quick add in my head, and uh, so that was nice of him. He didn't have to do that, so and it makes it easier because then I don't have to explain. Well, why do you have a fuel stop without a fuel receipt? So that makes the paperwork on the end a lot easier. And little stuff like that is why you have your spot. Have, why you have uh, a spot or a. A, a, something that reports the spot wallet or some kind of tracker like that because that's your backup for all of this so in the end if the question is asked well why weren't you there where's your fuel receipt well I didn't get a fuel receipt oh and by the way here's my uh, spot wallet track to uh, to additionally prove that I was there and they like those kind of trackers because they report to a third party app that's why I say you should buy the spot wallet well here we are another city this time we're in Albuquerque we're going to be turning west on I-40 and yes that is the way we're supposed to go so we don't need to so bug bunny don't need to chew me out for taking a wrong turn at Albuquerque it must have been damn warm here today because it is sitting at 88 right now at 7 o'clock at night so it must have been roasting here today. A little preview of what's coming. <laughs> Tomorrow it's going to be hot when we get to Vegas. I think highs are going to be mid to upper 90s tomorrow in Las Vegas, as you would expect. So give me a warm one tomorrow. But there's a part of me that's really looking forward to having some heat. A lot better than this damn uh, spring, crappy spring we've been dealing with at home, that's for sure. I don't know, I'm up for some, you know, 95 degrees right now, I'll be honest with you. I know that makes me kind of weird, but I've kind of been that way ever since I got back from Iraq. Like, I kind of... I kind of enjoy the desert heat. I mean, it sucks and it's a pain, but I tell you what, I'll take a hot, dry desert day anytime. Alrighty. We want to go to Gallup. Well, we 
made that turn. Downtown's over there, you can't see it. Kind of can see it, probably not. There it is. That's where downtown is. We're gonna get in this lane, cause this lane ends. I would like to come here someday and see all the Breaking Bad locations. That'd be kind of cool. I tell you what, take a look at that. Ain't that a hell of a view? That is such a hell, that's a hell of a view there. I don't know, people say on these type of runs you don't get to see anything. Um, I don't know, this looks pretty beautiful to me. But, I don't know, I think this is pretty cool. You can't tell we are in the desert. We are west of Albuquerque. And, yeah. Huh. This is pretty cool. This is, even, even with the interstate. Oh, there's a... Uh, it's over there. I'd be remiss, or I'd... I would, uh, I definitely want to mention, obviously, we're in Route 66 country here. I believe that's a chunk of the old Route 66 right there. And this is the uh, road that actually replaced 66 around here, so. I don't know, man. Can you imagine coming from Chicago and getting out to, like, here in the desert and thinking, what the hell, like, you know, as green as it is, and, and lush as it is in Illinois, and especially Missouri, even a little bit of Oklahoma, but then you get, you know, it drops off, drops off, and then you get out to here, and it's like, oh, wow, man, there's nothing here. Like, you know, you know it's so desolate in a way. I don't know, that would be... I don't know, that'd be interesting, old Studebaker going down that road. In the 1950s, man, hmm, that'd be kind of, that'd be interesting, interesting experience. Day one's in the books. We had to gallop. 
kind of get settled into the room here and drink Gatorade and Pop Tarts for supper, call our night. Oh yeah, shower too. But we got this far anyway, so made it in made it here in what for oh heck, what's nine? Uh, made it here in seventeen just under seventeen hours, so <laughs> Had some pretty good time, especially considering some of the shenanigans I had to deal with. You know, getting lost at Long Eggs on the interstate. That half hour stop that didn't need to be a half hour in Santa Fe, but we'll go get her tomorrow morning. That's what we'll do.